My goal is to have the best quarterback season ever, and I've overcome a lot in this series because I started as a 45 overall on the worst team in the game, and now I have almost perfect stats for a quarterback, alongside more coach trust than I've ever had before. The ultimate goal is to get Northern Kentucky a championship, though, and we all know that's not going to be easy, especially since when you look at our schedule, there are some tough matchups, and if we lose just one game, we probably won't make it into the 12-team playoffs, so it's a good thing I'm the reigning Heisman winner, and the preseason projections have us kind of close to the top 25. I think that's because senior wide receiver Jay Stun the second didn't go on to the NFL early, and even though me and him are the only two players on our team that are over 90 overall, somehow we're starting this season as a 95, so my guess is we have some really good coordinators or something, but we're not projected to win our conference, and I'm shocked by that, but hopefully I can get another Heisman Trophy, which would just add to my trophy collection where there's already four of them because I threw for almost 5,000 yards as a junior. Now before we hop into our first game of the season against Louisville, I did want to make sure I was warmed up through practice, and I rarely go to it anymore because of how good I've gotten, but some Sometimes it's nice to just sling the rock against our defense. I'd end up throwing a couple interceptions, so it's a good thing that I'm already getting it out of my system early on, and there's another. This was not a good showing for me, but I think we're still going to be fine against the Cardinals, and we're stacking up our XP, so if there's ever any upgrades I want to take throughout this season, then we'd be able to afford it. And I should also mention that even though I lost coach trust, we're pretty close to becoming a field general. It would be awesome to be able to call hot routes on the road, because right now we can't do it against the Cardinals. We have to take whatever they give us, and that's going to be straight to Dalen Maurice to get us to midfield. I'm liking how this one is opening up so far and we should be able to dot up this zone as well going back to him. So on my first drive of the day we are flying down the field and this is also the first time that I've ever faced off against the Cardinals. Despite NKU only being like an hour and a half away from Louisville we've never played them before and we're going down at the two so we don't need much more. They have us passing the ball and they get the sack. That was instant so my offensive line didn't even give me a chance. That should have been intercepted and I've got to be a little bit more careful with the ball. Our slants open and there we go. I wasn't expecting Dalen Murray to hold on to it after last year, but maybe as a senior, he's going to finally get good at catching and he does it again. Of all the games on our schedule this season, this is definitely one of the harder ones, so we need to be careful. And I can't believe that I'm watching this play from the sidelines. I must have gotten injured. By the time I'm back out there, it is still 7-3 to three, and we aren't going to go anywhere with the halfback screen. So I'm surprised that my coach wants us to run it back. And this time Calvin Gibbs, again, doesn't do very much, but he stiff arms someone. So at least he tried his best. And on third down, we are going to have Dalen Maurice for another reception. As a sophomore, he had a good season out of the slot for us, so it's nice to be using him again, and on the run, we are able to find Jace on the second. So even though last year we dealt with our receivers dropping the ball over 30 times, I think this year we'll be fine, and on third and three, I'm going to step up to try to get it myself, where with my legs, I'm able to do so. It would be nice if I could pass for another touchdown, and we're getting closer. But I don't get why my coach won't simply let me hand this ball off, and I'm going to find Evan Carter Jr. Our defense would also hold the Cardinals, so things are looking pretty good for us. Dalen Maurice is going to bring this one in, and the senior has 120 receiving yards before halftime, but he's not done because he's created separation to take it inside the 10. I am so happy with how this one's going for us so far, and I need somebody to get open. If not, I will take off with my legs, and that's going to make it 21 to 3 versus Louisville. I'm honestly just shocked at how well our defense is playing to get us the ball back within 30 seconds, and if we can keep this up, I'm starting to feel very confident about our chance at making the playoffs. It's been a long four years for Northern Kentucky, but Dalen Maurice is open, and he is gone, so I had a perfect first half, and I'm not sure if it's even going to matter that Louisville got a kick return for a touchdown. I haven't needed hot routes in this one either. They're going to leave the middle of the field wide open for me to take off, and that defender had a bad pursuit angle. There's just one more of these guys to beat. But from past mistakes, I've learned to either slide or just run out of bounds. And I was expecting us to play this well against some Mac schools, but not Louisville on the road. I mean, it hasn't even been close. I'm completing everything. So I can't be upset at Evan Carter Jr. for dropping that football, and I'm just going to run down some clock. By the time we're inside the 10, there's only about a minute left in this third quarter and Calvin Gibbs goes to the house. So if you're new to this series, you're probably shocked at how this is going, but this result has been four hard years of work in the making and my stat line ended up turning out super well. So we have almost 7,500 XP and that means that I'm going to make myself a little bit quicker. Right now, you're probably wondering how the computer would ever stop me, but you have to keep in mind that I'm playing on Heisman. So honestly, anything could happen as I try to become a field general and there are definitely some stat categories that I need to still make sure I improve upon. After doing that in our bye week, we're taking on Western Kentucky. So we have another in-state matchup coming up, and I'm hoping that we can eventually crack the top 25, but we're still not receiving votes. It should be no surprise I'm still leading the race for the Heisman, though, and that's because I won player of the week with my six touchdowns, which would be nice to replicate versus the Hilltoppers. Our rivals got off to a great start against us, already scoring a touchdown, so we're gonna have to respond back, and we've brought out the camo jerseys in this one where Calvin Gibbs gets like seven yards. I want to prove that we're the best team in the state of Kentucky, but we still need to make sure we beat them and then the Wildcats next week, so we got a lot of 
of results that we still have to make sure we pick up, but this is by far the best roster that we have had at Northern Kentucky yet, and that's going to be close to a first. I'm not sure I like the halfback screen play call on third and inches, but Calvin Gibbs should be able to get it. And now that we're inside the red zone, it's back to going on the ground where this gets a couple. If they're pressing here, this would be such an easy touchdown, but they weren't, so I couldn't take it to Dalen Maurice. Instead, I'm scrambling, and that's going to the grip. Then our defense would instantly get us an interception, which is nice, because we could get another touchdown versus them relatively easily, and I can't believe I threw that. They fooled me. I thought that was man-to-man -man coverage. It wasn't, but we can take our hitch, and Dunn goes backwards. But instead of kicking a field goal here, my head coach is letting me go for it, and I had to go back to Evan Carter Jr. He was my favorite target last season. Calvin Gibbs punches it in, and with our defense stopping Western Kentucky for the second time today already, we have a real opportunity to pull away here, and with my legs, I'm going to take it to about the 40-yard line. That was a really good first quarter offensively, and I'm hoping that this is press man-to-man -man coverage because I want to throw it up to our tight end if he's quicker, but it turns out he isn't. I still haven't thrown my first interception of the year, but I do make stupid reads every so often, and I'm shocked at how little we're running the football with the Norse right now, but that was almost really bad, and with the halfback screen, Calvin Gibbs is boxed up. Not being able to call hot routes here makes this really difficult to pick up, but I'm going to trust he has the speed to outrun that linebacker, and that was a perfect throw. Our halfback laid out to make the diving catch, and if the Hilltoppers thought they had a chance, they would need their defense to be playing much better against me. Even though we're performing like this right now, I already know some Mac school is going to come out and try to upset us and get pretty close to doing it. So even when we get to conference play, we're going to have to be very careful, especially whenever we're on the road. I'm pretty certain that if we lose even one game, there's zero chance of us making the playoffs because we play in such a weak conference. So we have got to keep up performing this well, and that's another touchdown. It's honestly game changing now that our defense is getting stops. I was scared of taking a four verticals there, but I'm able to use my legs to get around the defense. And that's one thing that I really couldn't do at the beginning of this series. I also have Dalen Maurice with that corner route, and he is not going to be able to break free. But he does get us inside the red zone, and with man-to-man -man coverage, he should get open again where he goes down at the three. I wish I could run the clock down before trying to get in here, but I'm not able to. So maybe it's a good thing that we didn't score there, and I hope our C route gets open. That defender's kind of in the area. I did not want to take it, but we still haven't punched it in, and finally we're going to be able to do so, which just makes that half perfect. During this season, if there's any games like this one where we have huge leads and it's clearly already over, I'm not going to show all the plays, but just know things could not be going any better for us, and there's another touchdown. Going into the fourth quarter, we're still up 35, and I'm pretty sure if I get us in here, that'd be my eighth touchdown of the day, but that ball was dropped, so now we have to try and do it on the ground, and I am not able to. It is third and goal now, and this play call was pretty rough. Nobody got open, but late, we're going to have our one, and in the end, we beat the Hilltoppers 70-14. to Most of that later work was done by our backups, so clearly somebody at NKU's been recruiting well, and with a stat line like that, I'm setting myself up to win back-to-back -back Heismans. Being the National Player of the Week's no longer a big accomplishment, and honestly, I would love if I could afford this upgrade to max out my acceleration, but we're currently on a bye week, so I'd need to have one of my best practices ever to put up 3,000 XP, and we are going to open it up with a catch. The issue, though, is ever since, I haven't had that many big plays, so maybe this one could go for a lot, and there we go. I feel like I'm getting closer and closer. I only need 1,000 XP now, but that's going to take a lot, and with four reps left, I think I still need like 500 XP, so we'll see if I can get there. What it would probably take is a touchdown play, so I'm going to try to roll out and see if I can hit a deep post, but instead I ended up scrambling. And it looks like on this next one, they're going to send in a blitz. I'm going to take it over to Harris, but they tackled him, so I have to make sure I at least complete a pass on this one, and I think I'm going to have to take off instead. I was able to get us up to 9,002 XP, though. So in the closest call of all time, I'm going to be able to max out my acceleration, and I'm quickly becoming a perfect quarterback. I also earned enough coach trust to become a field general, and that's going to be huge because in the next five weeks, we play Northern Illinois, Kentucky, and then number two, Notre Dame, so that should help us out, and it looks like we're receiving more votes than the Huskies. Whoever wins this game will be ranked in our conference, and we're on our home field for the first time this year. To start this game, our defense got a stop, and then we're running a terrible wide receiver screen, so my coach set me up for failure with that one, and I cannot believe that I have already thrown an interception in this game. That's my first one of the season. Then Evan Carter Jr. decided to drop the ball, so we are struggling against the Huskies. And on third and six, we just have to make sure that we keep the chains moving, so I'm glad that he held on. Dalen Maurice has been surprisingly consistent for us. I don't want to jinx it or anything, but he's going to come away with the football again. And I'll let Calvin Gibbs try to do something here where he gets almost nothing. I wouldn't be surprised if they keyed in on stopping me here, and that's what they did, but I was able to get us more than I thought. So now it is third down, and I think I'm just going to take our drag over to our tight end, which moves the chains, and he gets to the one. It's on me to help us finish this off now, and that's what I'm going to do. And then our defense would force a three and out, so we have an opportunity to take
take a lead with this drive. I'm honestly still in shock that this game started the way that it did versus them, but we've bounced back from that, and I'm just making smart read after smart read. My stats during this season are hopefully going to look way better than they have in the past, and I could have used a block there, but I didn't get it. So now it's second and seven. This is one of my favorite plays, but they're not running man-to-man, -man, and this is going to end badly. We have got to make sure that we at least stay in field goal range, and I can't take anything too stupid here, so I might as well scramble where this isn't going to make it. And this is the best man-to-man -man coverage that we've seen all season. If their offense hadn't taken a step back from last year, I'm afraid that we'd actually be losing to the Huskies right now. But instead, they've struggled, and it looks like with four verticals, I'm going to have somebody. But I couldn't get it out in time, and I am injured for the second time this year already. We get the touchdown, but they'd score one as well before I'd get thrown out there with about 30 seconds left in this half, and I just have to play this one smart. The last time I waited for one of those four verticals to eventually get open, I got injured, but this time it's going to work out for us. And my coach continues to call the most OP play in the game over and over where this is going to be dropped. I don't know what's happened to Evan Carter Jr., our tight end, but he's starting to struggle more and more. So it's a good thing that he made up for it by holding on to that football. And to start the third quarter, we have the ball, which is a good sign that we should be able to hold on to our lead and get the win versus them. I mean, all we need is a touchdown on this drive and we'd have a three possession lead. I have to try to bomb them deep just to see if it works. And those are the type of plays that I'm expecting to see out of our tight end. I think Northern Illinois tried their best, but there's only so much that they're able to do. And with our defense continuing to get us the ball back, they're in a lot of trouble. Dalen Maurice isn't going to get this though, but that's not going to stop me from trying it again as I think he's going to beat 38 and he is able to do it. I don't understand why the Huskies think they can press our best receivers, but it makes my life 10 times easier. And on a third and goal, I'm going to just throw it over to Thompson, but I honestly hit the wrong button and that should have been picked off. From there, I thought that would be it, but Northern Illinois is determined to stay in this game and they did not bite on that wheel route. I've thrown another pick. That's the first one that's been my fault. And I got greedy trying to put up some amazing stats because with a touchdown now, we find ourselves only up by 11, but that's a big play. Evan Carter Jr. breaks the tackle. And I still believe that it would be pretty hard for us to lose this game because they cannot play defense. I mean, even if they continue to score, they have to get the ball back to get more points. And I just don't see that happening. Calvin Gibbs is going to help us move the chains with this one. But my coach kept on calling halfback draws and they were all over it. So they are going to get a stop. And as I'm watching this from the sidelines, I'm not happy because they're getting it super close. I mean, we should have had the interception there, which would have ended it, but instead they're going to make that catch. And on fourth and goal, all we have to do is get the stop, which we do. As long as we don't take a safety, we are going to stay undefeated and that will do it. Thank you, Calvin Gibbs. But I'm honestly not too happy about how this went because even though we got a really good result and my stat line looked great, I threw two picks. So I'm just glad that I'm still a field general and I could become a household name soon. That's the last level I really care to reach, but you can see those turnovers affected my Heisman odds. So I would be upset, but Northern Kentucky is ranked for the first time in this road to glory. And it's only taken us four years to surpass Kentucky, which is crazy, but they're one and three and we're favored to win. I'm playing against my favorite team in one of the biggest games remaining this season where Dalen Maurice already makes a catch. And I have been ripping apart every defense that I've faced off against so far. So I'd expect us to do the same today. The key to my success hasn't been going for as many deep shots, but instead taking whatever they give us underneath like this. And eventually that'll open up everything else. So later on in the game, I can throw whatever and that's going to be a laser. They'd only get a field goal on their first drive, so we have them exactly where we want them to be. But I couldn't get that throw away with the ball, so we're just going to have to pick this up and it looks like we will. Dalen Maurice is already having a fantastic day for us with like 100 yards. And if they want to start focusing more on him, I'm going to get some other guys involved. Here on second and seven, I am expecting man to man, but it was zone and I'm going to be very careful here where I can't get it out. So that's definitely on me for hesitating, but we're still going to move the chains on third and 12 and I have yet to throw an incompletion in this match. I might as well sling this one and he's wide open. I cannot believe that I went from being a 45 overall to being this dominant, but even with that in mind, I'm still not sure if we're going to be capable of winning a championship this final season. I mean, we're playing really well against some decent schools, but we also haven't faced off against a top opponent yet, and that Notre Dame game midseason could be a big wake-up call for us. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but I'm looking forward to it and I can get the first here. It's honestly just super important that we continue to make sure we take care of business and I'm going to get sacked. So I'll give Kentucky's defense credit for that. They have been pretty good at stopping my scrambling and I hate that we're going with a wide receiver screen on third and 17, but I didn't even want to take it. It worked out for us because we'd punt it back to the Wildcats and then we'd get a safety almost instantly. So everything is going our way and they tried to send in a blitz, but it's not going to get in in time. We get it over to Dunn the second. This has been another incredible first half when it comes to me throwing the football because I'm already over 250 yards, but these wide receiver screens are getting locked up. I cannot outrun Kentucky 
either, but we're gonna have that up the seam and they read me like a book. I threw that way too late. And with the Wildcats scoring, they have this one back within a possession. I was so confident we were cruising to the easiest wins ever, but now we're starting to struggle. And I just know that that turnover is gonna really hurt my Heisman odds because I already was struggling after throwing two of them last week. But I also didn't have my eye on the clock and I've just realized that we're probably gonna go to half without getting more points. I mean, I'd thread the needle and then call an instant timeout. But for our kicker to hit from 55 yards out, that would be insane and he doesn't. Kentucky would also start the second half by getting a field goal. And I just hope that this drive goes well for us because right now it looks like this is gonna be a close game. It is not a good sign that we're struggling versus a one in three SEC school, but we pick it up. And even with the mistakes I've made, I'm still sitting at 17 for 20 on the day. So it's not like I'm playing bad and I've been called for another quarterback draw, but it didn't work. Now it's third down. And with this drag, I had to give it to Evan Carter Jr. again. He is my go-to target whenever I need us to pick up a gain. And I put that perfectly on the money, but we still have a bit to go if we want to reach the end zone here. And I just got flattened. That is what happens every single time I don't slide. And my coach wants me to run a halfback swing play, but they were all over it. I've been trying to change some of his play calls, but the options to switch to other things aren't any better. And going into the fourth quarter, we have a huge third down. To be honest, I'm just going to stare down this left side of the field where Dalen Maurice broke the press. And then our defense would force a fumble. So we have the ball back already, which is great. I was genuinely worried for a second, but now I feel like we should be able to just take care of business. And I've lost the football because I tried to run for the first. So again, I'm making mistakes. And it's a good thing that in the end, it shouldn't matter because by the time there's a minute left, we're still up by seven, but we have struggled to run out the rest of the clock. And I hate this play call on third and long. Kentucky would then get a huge punt return so they could tie it all up here, but we stop them. And I'm so relieved that we're leaving our home field with a win. We've started to own the Wildcats, which I really appreciate. And Dalen Maurice won player of the game. So that's when you know that my stat line wasn't that impressive. The real issue is I got sacked seven times and I'm not sure how with that performance I went up in the Heisman watch. I am happy to see the only other team that looks to be that good in our division is Ohio though. And we're going to play them on the road after we play at Western Michigan, but then there's the Notre Dame game. These next three matchups mean so much for this team. And last season, we barely survived against the Broncos. So we need to be careful. This is our first road game in conference play and they could catch us off guard. So I need to get the ball out a little bit quicker, clearly, and that's going to be reeled in. Now, unfortunately, I have noticed pretty quickly that I'm not able to make any hot routes on the road, which is a big problem because that means I'm no longer a field general, but Calvin Gibbs just had a great play. And on third and inches, we should go back to him. If they focus on him though, I'm going to pull it and keep it myself as there's a lot of space in front of me. And they just hit me as hard as they could. We're going to try to get this over to Malachi Harris, but I was honestly afraid it wouldn't work. And we'll take the C route again if it does. This has been a solid opening drive and their man-to-man -man coverage kind of stuck there, but I still threw it to our fourth wide receiver. And now I'm glad that I did. It's so nice that the Broncos also weren't able to do anything offensively because we already have it back. We could go up 14 to zero and nobody's on Jace on the second. Whatever coverage they were running there, it wasn't any good and they keep on leaving the flats wide open. So I might as well continue to look there and it seems like we are going to have Maurice over the middle. I just need to get my team five more yards through the air to get the touchdown and I do. But the next time we're getting the ball, it's gonna be on our own five yard line and that's pretty intimidating. With one mistake, we could find ourselves in a little bit of trouble and I just got it out in time. So at least now we're out of the danger zone and I'm not sure if I should try to be throwing this up to our tight end right now. But sometimes you have to take shots like that. If that was a linebacker on him, he would have definitely been gone and I'm getting it out quick again. So as long as I don't turn it over, I'm on track to bounce back from my last two performances and I just want to hand it off to Calvin Gibbs. So now it is third and long for the Norse and I probably could have scrambled to the right side of the field if I saw it quicker. I'm going to throw it on the run and it's not on target. Unfortunately, after that, the Broncos would score a touchdown. So now we find ourselves in a one possession game versus them and they're doing their best to keep this one interesting and also close. I'd feel a lot better about how this one's going to go if we could end this drive with another touchdown. And so far, it looks like we're on pace to do so. I see Calvin Gibbs over there with no one on him, but now my coach wants me to run four verticals. So, you know, I'm going to sling it deep and Thompson goes to the end zone. I'm pretty happy with how that went. We also have the ball back with about 30 seconds left in the half and they've left me way too much time because I can pick apart this defense. Even without being able to put hot routes out there on the field, I'm not struggling too much, but that defensive end was pretty quick and I'm just going to run out of bounds. Now there's 15 seconds left on the clock, but that's man to man. And now I'm just going to stare down Jay Stun the second, which panned out. I mean, as long as our defense continues to hold it down, they're not going to stand a chance. And that seems to be the case of what's going to happen. I should try to beat them over the top with our tight end, but I underthrew it into a pick and I cannot believe that I just turned it over there. That should have been an easy touchdown, but instead I made another mistake that's going to hurt my stat line. And that's the one thing I didn't want to do. I think it's going to be more 
more difficult than I was expecting to win back-to-back -back Heismans, but we'll see. I might be able to pull it off, and that's a first. As long as we're able to end this drive with a touchdown, I'm going to feel pretty good about closing it out. And here on second and one with a little bit of play action, I'm going to roll out, find our comeback route, and that's a great throw. Things are honestly going pretty well still, even though I'm super bummed out about the turnover I had. And I don't know who number 81 is, but I've been staring him down, and with this corner route, he's going to reach the end zone. At the end of the day, we'd close this one out with another win, and I threw for one more touchdown to get myself up to six total. So that's how the final score looks this bad, and I'm just happy that I'm going to become a field general again. With that result, if the season ended right now, we would be in the 12-team playoff, but now we're going to have to step up because we're playing on the road at Ohio, and this game could decide who wins our division. With a spot in the conference championship on the line, I cannot afford to have a bad performance, and this is the best possible start as Malachi Harris catches it, and there is nobody that's going to catch him. That was our first play of the game, and within a minute, Ohio would respond back with their own touchdown, so you can tell what type of matchup this is going to be. We're the best two teams in our division, and whoever comes out on top of this one is probably going to win it, so it's very important. And it's always a rare thing to hand it off to Calvin Gibbs, but it looks like he's going to take this one for two. I think that's why our coach just doesn't have us run the ball that much, and Dalen Maurice dropped it. So it's third and nine, the halfback screen over to Calvin Gibbs kind of works, and he is going to take it for the first down plus a lot more. Whenever that's the play call, you never know what's going to happen, but my coach loves it, and I'm going to be able to escape the pocket here to scramble with my own legs. I need to get a block, and that's exactly what I have. I probably could have thrown it, but that worked as well, and if I want to feed this into somebody, it's going to be our backup running back. So now we're down on the half inch line and with the halfback toss, we're going to get in. Then our defense would get a stop and it looks like they're going with man to man coverage. So I have to try and bomb them deep. But Dalen Maurice was not able to drag a foot with this catch. And that's frustrating because I put that one perfectly on the money. This is the final play of the first quarter. And I think I'm going to have to try and take our tight end up the seam, which works. But that was kind of a risky read to make in that situation. And I'm just glad that it paid off for us. I'm going to be able to find him again for this play. And you got to wonder if the Bobcats are going to figure out how to stop our offense. We've already had almost 200 total yards, and I don't think I see anything here, but I still get it to Dalen. So it's very clear to me that they can't stop our wide receivers, and what a throw. They had a defender in the area that could have definitely played that, but I made sure that I high-pointed this pass, and 42 didn't jump. Then once Ohio got inside the red zone, our defense would force a huge fumble to get us the ball back. So even though they've played pretty well, we could go up by three possessions here, and there's no way they're going to keep up with Dalen Maurice, who just dusted them. Our receivers might struggle to catch the ball, but they also have some speed on them, and that's going to be an interception. I didn't think Ryder was going to get over to that football, so I always make a mistake, and that could have led to the Bobcats scoring points, but they didn't. I have so much time back here in the pocket, and it's just going to be whoever I want to take. Evan Carter Jr. breaks free down to the eight. It's not even halftime, and I've already thrown for almost 300 yards in this game, and with 46 seconds left in the half, we have it back again where that's going over to Malachi Harris to get us to midfield, and the goal is to definitely put up some more points just because we can where I see Calvin Gibbs and he brings it in. That was a little bit of a late read, but it did work out for us, and they sent in a blitz where I fumble it away. Hall's gonna pick this up, and don't tell me he's about to break free. That's another turnover from me, and I'm a little worried that the Bobcats have it within seven points. I'm gonna keep this read option, though, and if these blocks would hold up, I might be gone. I got around that one defender just one more to beat now, but you can definitely tell there that my top end speed just isn't where it needs to be yet, and Malachi Harris just took that in easily. That has to be one of the worst attempts I've ever seen at making a tackle, and then with the Bobcats failing to get points on their next drive, we're up by 14. I don't understand why our coach is so insistent on us running halfback screens over and over. But now it's going to be third and four where Calvin Gibbs is not going to make it to the marker. It doesn't seem to matter that they're able to get stops on us though because we keep getting it back. And I think we're about to get the result we were looking for in one of our biggest games of the year. We've already come out on top of some of the most difficult matchups on our schedule, but the Notre Dame one's going to be even more difficult and I'm going to have Dalen Maurice where he gets into the end zone. Being able to double the score of the second best team in our division should tell you how solid we are and I might be able to get a touchdown. But unfortunately, they caught me right before I broke free. And from there, we just run out the rest of the clock. So we've been moved all the way up to number eight in the country and Notre Dame has fallen down to number 16. But that's because they're coming off of back-to-back -back losses. And I'm sure they're going to come out playing really well against us. So we'll see what happens in the future. And we have to put the rest of the Mac on our back. To do that, I am going to increase some of my running abilities. And it's time to see how good NKU actually is. This could be the hardest game that I've ever had to play in my career. And we have the ball first where the wide receiver screen gets open, but we lose yards. You know, I gotta say, so far, I'm not too happy with the options we've had when it comes to play calling against the Irish, but we got close to getting the first. And Calvin Gibbs fought his heart out, but they scored a touchdown quickly. So we already find ourselves down 7-0, to zero, and I can't believe it's another screen play on second down. These options have been driving me insane, and on third and 13, it looks like our drag to Carter Jr. isn't gonna make it. So we're down 14-0 to zero pretty early on again.
against them. And it's another halfback screen, so I've got to change the play. Hopefully, I can get a big gain for us here. Their man-to-man -man coverage looks like it's pretty solid, though. And on the run, I'm going to throw it over to Dalen Maurice, which was definitely needed in that situation. And I have him again here, but they're going to call that a fumble. Are you serious right now? That should not have been a turnover. But now we find ourselves down 17-0 to in the most important game of our season. And I don't know if it's going to be possible to make the playoffs if we lose this. As a one-loss Mac school last year, there was no chance Northern Illinois was able to sneak in. And that was marked as a fourth and in inches. So they got the ball back to get another field goal against us. And look at that. Dalen Maurice confused that defender. He is gone. This is how we have to start the third quarter. Please tell me he doesn't get caught. I was starting to get super worried about how we were doing, but at least something finally went right offensively and they would score again. These drops are driving me nuts and we're just not playing well versus the Irish. So I'm going to need Evan Carter Jr. to get open on third and 12. And that's what he does. If we want any chance of coming back in this game, there is absolutely zero room for error. But one of my favorite routes to take in this series that gets open like 90 percent of the time doesn't do it versus Notre Dame and on the run I find Harris but he dropped it. I am starting to lose my mind on this third and long. I think I'm just going to step up and pick it up with my legs because I'm able to get around all these defenders but I didn't hold on to the football and everything is going wrong for us today. I legitimately don't think things could be going any worse and after scoring another touchdown I've just accepted that we aren't going to beat Notre Dame in this game. This loss alone should be enough to make sure that we don't get into the playoffs but you never know there could be a chance and I'll be interested to see how far we drop but we did not compete with them the way I thought we would. Last year, we played against Ohio State and did a lot better, but we've also been really unlucky versus the Irish, and I'm just going to roll out and wait for Malachi Harris to get open where he comes away with the ball to get us to the 10. Obviously, we stand almost no chance at coming back with this much time left, but you never know what could happen. We could get lucky with some onside kicks, and I love that my offensive line just gave up there, but we still get in. We need to get really lucky, and that's not going to happen. Temple is able to pick up that football, and I shouldn't even be surprised that Notre Dame would get another touchdown. Touchdown. I honestly thought our defense was special, but after this performance, I think they're pretty rough against good schools. And the only reason I'm still playing this game is because I want to put up better stats to hopefully win the Heisman Trophy, but I'm going to throw a pick. That was such a stupid read to make at the end to make this performance even worse from me. I am not happy with how that went, and I think I need to start going to practice again. I've already thrown six interceptions, which is just as many as I had last year, but at least the touchdown totals have been nice because I'm no longer a field general. That means no hot routes on the road versus Akron, but it shouldn't be an issue since there are 74 overall. And the fact that we've only fallen to 15 actually gives me hope that we can still make the playoffs. I mean, our remaining five games shouldn't be difficult besides maybe at Central Michigan. And we've taken down the other team in our division that could keep us out of the conference championship. So then we'd have an opportunity to probably face Toledo, who's ranked in the top 25. And even with a bad game versus Notre Dame, I'm still number one for the Heisman. Now, before we play Akron, I have returned to practice just to get better. Again, Malachi Harris broke that. And because I haven't been in the lab as much as I was last season, that's probably why I'm throwing so many picks. I really haven't needed to be much because I've been a 99 overall for a while, but maybe this will end up helping me because I'm getting a lot better with these deep shots. I honestly just wanted to get enough coach trust to become a field general again, and it's time to take on the zips. After losing our first game of the season, I'm playing on the road, so we have to make sure we bounce back because if we can't, we're definitely going to miss out on the playoffs. And I don't love that I can't call hot routes in this game, but there's still some good reads to make. As of recently, Dalen Maurice has started to drop the ball a lot more, but I'm going to give him another opportunity and hope Hopefully trusting him like that will allow him to start playing a lot better. With this quarterback draw, I'm going to get us 20 yards. So now we're getting closer to scoring a touchdown, and that's going to go to Evan Carter. This is exactly how we needed to open up the game versus the Zips. I'm very proud of it. And apparently that wasn't a touchdown, so I'm going to have to take it in. Now at this point in the year, it's no surprise when my defense gets a stop. And the chemistry that I'm building up with some of these guys has been insane, but they boxed up this wide receiver screen where I actually thought that I could outrun that guy. And that was such a stupid decision from me. I think Calvin Gibbs stepped out of bounds before catching it. And if I'm being smart, I shouldn't force it on this third and 23 because that's just going to lead to a turnover against Akron. Instead, I'd simply just let our defense get us the ball back. And this could be a 95-yard drive if we're able to finish it off with a touchdown. We had to start it deep in our own territory, but I think we're going to be okay. Evan Carter Jr. hasn't gotten that much separation and that could have been picked. But I figured my ball placement would be a little bit better and it was on this one. I'm still super upset with how we played against the Irish. That was a great blitz. And it's almost like we lost all the momentum that we had at the start of the season, but hopefully we can get it back in these coming weeks. I mean, it doesn't help that some of the play calling's been terrible, but we should be okay as long as our defense continues to force turnovers, and I see that we have a wide-open Malachi Harris over there. I'm kind of impressed that he managed to not score, because he had an easy running lane to the end zone, and he didn't take it. Now it's third and goal, and with no hot routes out there, I have to make the right read, but Jay Stun the second came back to school instead of going on to the NFL, so I should honestly be looking in his direction more than I do, because he's our best wide receiver on this 
team and I got sacked. It's all good though because they're running man-to-man -man coverage which means we're going to have him. And my stats in this performance have been pretty solid so far but they stuck with our tight end. I'm used to that route getting wide open and I could have Dalen Maurice if my arm can get it far enough which it kind of did but he still had to come back to it and I'm going to easily run it in for us. I don't know what's changed between this week and last week but now our defense doesn't want to give up a single point and it must have been a wake-up call. My fear though is even if we do make it to the college football playoffs we're going to get destroyed and winning a championship's the last goal of this series but I only have this year. I'm very happy with how things have gone since I started as a 45 overall. I didn't even know if all of this would be possible and this is my biggest run yet or at least close to it. It felt like it was a lot longer than it was and to take Northern Kentucky to this level has been impressive but there's still a lot of work that I have to do the rest of this season. Being 17 to 20 in this game I'm bouncing back versus the Zips and I'll probably score another touchdown to end the third quarter because our defense forced an interception but that would be the last time that I would see the field and I'm fine with that because my stat line looks solid but the most impressive thing about this game was our defense getting a shutout. I think it could be a close call because our strength of schedule isn't going to be the highest but we're climbing back up the pulse we should make it into the playoffs and we just have to make sure that we win out. But first throughout this series I'm sure you've noticed their logos across our field and jerseys so it's time to talk about prize picks today's video sponsor. March Madness is right around the corner so you have to get the app if you don't have it and you can play in over 30 states so there's a good chance yours is eligible. If you don't know what prize picks is on there you simply select between two to six players and higher or lower on their projections and I would have 25 x to my money if I got all six of those right but because they're harder to hit I also like smaller entries like these and if you want some free cash to start out with on prize picks code board or the first link in my description will double your initial deposit up to a hundred dollars. Now it's time to try to sneak into the playoffs with NKU and any loss at this point in the season would be detrimental to how the rest of the year goes and Miami Ohio is normally one of the better teams in the MAC but not this season. They're sitting at four and five so I'm honestly not as worried about facing them as I normally am as Harris gets us the first and we're coming off a 38 to zero win versus Akron so we are playing some good football. The Notre Dame game is still in the back of my head but that's only because I was shocked at how bad we lost to them. I'm going to be able to scramble for this first and maybe a bit more but I lost it and no matter how many times I remind myself to slide when playing Road to Glory I always end up forgetting to do so and our backup tight end just got boxed. That is why we need Evan Carter Jr. back out there and he got a ton of separation so we're going to reach the end zone early on versus the Red Hawks and just like expected we're getting the ball back after our defense held them to zero. If we could get back to back shutouts that would be pretty cool. I don't think I've ever done that before and I gotta say I'm very proud of how much Northern Kentucky improved with me because now we're experiencing less drops than ever before and this is going to be caught to take us to the 30. Of all the Road to Glory series I've done on this game this has to be my favorite one so far. Calvin Gibbs broke that tackle and he's still up but he lost the football and Miami Ohio picks it up. It's not going to matter since they can't do anything with it but now this will be the final play of the first quarter and I gotta throw it away. This hasn't been our best showing ever but I feel like because we're playing against Miami Ohio we're playing down to our competition and that's bad. They would get a field goal on their next drive but we still have a lead versus them and Harris couldn't get free. So I guess we're back to running another halfback screen and I can't believe they keep calling it. I can only change the plays so many times but I guess I need to be doing it more often now and if I could just get the next level of coach trust I would then have the option to change it 20 times a game which would be double of what I have right now. So if we want any chance in the playoffs I think that's something I need to unlock. To do so I have to cut out the turnovers so I've been taking more checkdowns than deep shots and the only longer routes I'm throwing are the routes that I know will get open. Even then sometimes I'm caught by surprise but there's a touchdown and with a minute and a half left in this second quarter I have an opportunity to get us some more points where I'm gonna take off and I should just slide. It was not worth being that risky to get six yards and what was that pressure? I swear Heisman mode cheats you out all the time. That person instantly glitched around our whole team and I just love that our defense continues to force stops for us because it is still 14 to 3. After they held us near the end of the second quarter they had two opportunities to get points but they couldn't do it and I see that they have Malachi Harris over on an island there but I didn't take it over to him. We actually have Dalen Maurice deep and what a pass that was. Just take it into the crib. Normally after I figure out if they're running man to man or zone it's not too hard to break apart the defense especially when I'm able to put hot routes out there like this curl route that always beats man to man. Because of stuff like that and my knowledge with this game I feel like we would have a chance in the playoffs. I had to try and attempt a deep play but it turns out that our best wide receiver isn't able to burn by a Mac cornerback and here on first and 10 I am gonna roll out to hopefully take X but they have another defender over there he was on the other receiver and of course I'm gonna throw my seventh pick of the season and miss the tackle I don't know what I was thinking but my coach trust just got hit hard and I don't like how common of an occurrence turnovers are becoming if I'm gonna win the Heisman Trophy I have got to figure out how I'm gonna cut them out and after getting a stop Miami Ohio would score against us so technically this game's not over and my coach seems to want to keep it on the ground 
around with Calvin Gibbs, but he doesn't do much. It is frustrating whenever it's all out of my hands and I just have to feed it to him, but the halfback screen could have worked. And now that the Red Hawks have it within a possession, we've got to be careful, but I'm still going to sling it to my favorite target. It's honestly a shock to me that we are in a close game with them because we have dominated this game, but it's college football, so you can always lose to any team and I am going for the deep bomb on them, but it's not it. For as much as Dalen's improved, he still isn't good at dragging a foot, and I'm not sure if we're in field goal range, so we need to make sure we run clock, but my coach is calling pass and place, and on third and nine, Calvin Gibbs is going to take it all the way to the first down marker. With things out of my control, we needed him to step up there to seal this game, and I can't chew the clock, but I am able to run out the rest of it where I might as well try and get a touchdown. The quarterback draw is one of the worst plays that I have to run in this game, but sometimes it works, and now my coach wants me to get down on my knees. It was closer than we would have liked, but we still got the right result, and there's just a few games left in the year now, so I feel like the Heisman Trophy is probably mine, but I'm a little bit worried because we're not moving up in the college football playoff poll, so we might not sneak in, and with this upgrade, my speed's gonna go up by two. As for my coach trust, in the next three games, we need to get another thousand, so that's our goal as we finish out the rest of the season. This is one of the last few conference games that I'm ever gonna play in my career, and it still blows my mind how quick this series has flown by for us, but it's been very fun, so hopefully we can take care of business at home against Bowling Green, and it would be so nice if I could just avoid turning the ball over in this matchup versus them. So far, I've yet to throw an incompletion, but the game also just started. And since they're two and seven, I don't think they're going to give us any issues. They're not able to guard Jace on the second. And even though he's our best receiver on paper, he hasn't had the best of years because Dalen Maurice gets all the targets. We just need eight more yards now and Calvin Gibbs is going to go backwards. So I don't understand why my coach wants me to hand it off again because it doesn't work. It's a shame we can't run the ball, but we got to stop resorting to doing so on third down. I'm taking the sack and the Falcons are going to hold us to just a field goal. Now, because of how good our defense is, that might be the only points that we're going to need to win this game, but I'm sure we'll end up getting more and Calvin Gibbs continues to struggle. I'd love for him to just break off one or two runs against them, but because he can't make it happen, it's all on me to move it through the air and that's what I've done here. I'm hoping that this time in the red zone, we're able to finish it off and I think we're getting close, but it was a slow offensive first quarter and I love that we're passing instead of running because we're going to have somebody open in the flat and I should have taken the slant instead. I've yet to throw an incompletion, so I'm trying my best to keep that streak going, but I'm afraid that's not going to go well for me here as I have to throw it away. And now my coach just wants to let me hand it off to Calvin Gibbs, but he doesn't get in. We are going for it on fourth and goal. I'm glad he gave me the option, but our offensive line just let them get by freely and I'm going to have to take it in myself. That was a very chaotic play and I definitely got set up for failure, but it worked out in the end besides the fact that we missed the extra point and Bowling Green still hasn't been able to get onto the board. But after back-to-back -back drops, it's third and 10 and thankfully Jace done the second picks it up. I honestly never know what to expect out of our offense and Evan Carter Jr. just got a lot of separation. So that's nice to see. I don't know why we're even trying to incorporate play action because they know we're not going to run it, but it is all good. With this first and 10 play call, they have a quarterback spy out there set up to stop me and he did. If I could continue to boost up my speed, that's about the only thing I could still work on in this series and Calvin Gibbs got some good blocks, but now we're going to let our best wide receiver take it with the jet sweep and he got blown up. Being able to go through this whole road to glory with the creative team makes me so excited for the new game if we can have team builder. And I think we're going to have another drive that stalls out because another halfback screen was called, but we're able to pick it up plus a lot more. Calvin Gibbs' foot hit the pylon, so we're going to get a touchdown. And with 42 seconds left in the second quarter, things are looking good for us. I almost wanted to try to throw it up there, but instead I've decided to scramble. So I'm avoiding doing anything risky, and after rolling out, it looks like our flat is the only thing that was really open here. I'm just waiting for them to press one of our best receivers, but it hasn't happened. So I'm methodically having to work it down the field against them. We only have one timeout left, so this has got to go for a first down. But because it didn't, time is ticking off of the clock fast, and this is going to be caught at the one yard line. I wish my coach would let me be aggressive here, but that was probably the right move to make it a three possession game because Bowling Green started the second half with a score. I feel like it shouldn't be too difficult to have more success in this one and close it out, but we're one pick six away from this being a tight game and in that man-to-man -man coverage, they had another zone sitting there. If I didn't lowball that pass, they would have definitely picked me off. And the ball is in Calvin Gibbs' hands on third and three where he is not getting enough. Our defense would recover a fumble for a touchdown though. So by the time I'm back out there, we have a three possession lead and I'm gonna roll out to try and take this deep post. Being up by this much in the third quarter means we're not gonna have to do much more to seal the win, and a touchdown on this drive would pretty much do it for us as we are gonna find Dalen Maurice to get us to the 40. He's over 100 receiving yards in this game already, so he's having a very good day. I'm gonna step up and maybe spin out all those defenders, but it didn't work out the way I thought it would, and I must have gotten injured because I'm watching this third down over from the sidelines. Our backup would turn it over, and then Bowling Green would go down the field to get a touchdown against us. As long as we pick up a couple of first downs, we should be fine, but they're gonna get the interception against me, and this is not good. I'm gonna have to make the tackle, and I don't 
they've broken free and oh my gosh. Jim Murphy just made this a one possession game and they're not going for the onside kick. They are sending it deep. So they're going to trust their defense against us. We'll see if we get anything with the return and we don't. And my coach has me dumping this one off to Calvin Gibbs where I don't know why we even risked passing it. All we need is a first down and this game's going to be over, but it's not going to happen here. So I am relieved that I get to pass it on this third and four and they get the sack. I cannot believe we're in a tight game with Bowling Green on fourth and five. They're not going to get it though. So we're going to survive against the Falcons. And right now we are not performing well. I'm honestly stunned that my coach still considers me as a field general. And I'm also surprised by the fact that I'm still number one in the Heisman watch, but at least we've already sealed our spot into the conference championship where we'd face off against number 18 Toledo. And their only losses have come against Oklahoma and Florida. I feel like beating them in the MAC championship would be an impressive win, but we have to stay undefeated until we get there first. If I don't play well, we won't make the college football playoffs and I won't win the Heisman trophy. So my goal is to have no turnovers against Central Michigan. And they always come when I'm least expecting it. They have locked up with man-to-man -man coverage. So I thought it was best if I just took the sack and it looks like Calvin Gibbs has a lot of space over there where he breaks one, but eventually somebody would get to him making it third and seven. And this route is coming across the field where Maurice is going to get us the first. In order to take it, I had to be very patient, but I knew eventually he would be open and our offensive line is holding up pretty well so far. I'm not happy the backup tight end dropped the ball, but that's why we put Evan Carter Jr. back in instantly. And this is going to take us to the three, or at least it would have if Dalen Maurice could have held onto the ball. I am going to give him another chance with this play, but as of recently, he's making more and more mistakes and our slants aren't getting open. I would have never expected Central Michigan to have lock up man to man defense against us, but they have so far. So I'm hoping for more zone coverage and on third and three, I'm going to reach that zone. Then our defense would get a stop on them. So I am going to go for the deep bomb with that press coverage and Dalen Maurice dropped it. If anybody else was playing in this slot, we would already be up 14 to zero against them. And I swear his lack of ability to just catch the football is going to be the reason we lose a playoff game. But until then, we have to continue to just play it out. And if I could adjust the depth chart and road to glory, I'd definitely put someone else there. I think Dalen Maurice would make for a good outside receiver, but in this slot, he's just not consistent enough. And here on third and 10 with this slant, we are going to hopefully move the chains. Surprisingly, this is one of the few times that we've handed off the ball so far. And you all can let me know if I'm giving Calvin Gibbs too much hate, but I feel like he never does anything with those runs, but more out of the air. He's better as a receiving back for us. And on third and eight, there's a route that I always love to take with this play. And to my surprise, Dalen Maurice caught the football. I also just broke my own school record at Northern Kentucky, which is pretty cool. Now I'm going to go for the deep shot that Jay stunned the second, and he might be gone if Johnson can't catch him. That's probably been open more times than not this season, and I just haven't noticed it. I think I should be able to get around these defenders, just a couple more to beat. And we're going to let Calvin Gibbs try to show off his speed with the halfback toss, but it doesn't work. I am so sick of watching him struggle, but we do have an open slant, and Dalen Maurice has his second touchdown of the day. For as much complaining as I've done, we're up 21 to 0, and that blocking was absolutely atrocious. So now it's second and 17 with the route bounce. We should have a huge gain though. Malachi Harris has broken free and there's just one player that could still catch him and he doesn't. Central Michigan wouldn't score on their next drive either. So we have the ball back again up by 28. And at this point, there's not going to be much more to show is we're going to continue to dominate. Dalen Maurice is gone and he's not being caught either. Now I'm not happy that through Sim, I would throw an interception in this one. So that's a little disappointing, but we've had such a large lead for the second half and the backup was in for a while, but then Central Michigan cut it back to a 25 point lead. So I get to be out there on the field to help us end this one. And I'm going to do it with my legs as I just scramble for an easy first down. It's nice that we're improving to 10 and one, but I'm averaging a turnover a game, even with these wild stats. And I've got so much XP to spend. So I might as well continue to upgrade things like this. Now that we're up to number 10 in the polls, I know we're going to make the playoffs if we win out. And the only team left on our schedule is Buffalo. This is my final regular season game ever. And I'm going to start it out by finding Dalen Maurice, but I really want to pass for a ton of yards. So I'm going to try to throw up some deep shots in this game. And I ended up finding him on another slant with this play. My eyes are going to be glued on Jay Stun the second though for a lot of this matchup because whenever he's not running wide receiver screens, I'm going to make sure that he is always on a streak. My coach wants to keep it up with the wide receiver screens though. So we're running back to back ones against Buffalo and here on first and 10, their man to man coverage is not going to stick on our slot receiver. Whenever he's catching the ball, he is so good, but I don't know if I can trust him to do it here. So I had to take off myself and I still need to earn about 600 coach trust before we reach the playoffs. So it would definitely be ideal if we could continue to play this well. I've yet to see an opportunity to throw it up to Jay Stun the second, but I felt like this could be one and I just did it anyway. So I'm very glad that he was able to make the catch there. And I swear that they know that we are running the ball every time before we do it. I am going to be able to run in myself though. And that's going to make it 21 to zero before the end of the first quarter. As our defense continues to get us the ball back, it's becoming very apparent that Buffalo doesn't stand much of a chance against us. And just like the Central Michigan game, we're going to be able to end this one pretty early on from what I'm seeing. Once we go up by four 
four possessions, that's my calling to start simming a little bit because that would just be a waste of time to keep playing. So hopefully there won't be any turnovers even with me doing that and I'm gonna run for like 20. I'm still waiting to see Jay Stun the second get open deep more often though. I was only able to find him once. I'm gonna find Dalen here. And I have yet to throw an incompletion in this game where we are already approaching halftime. Jay Stun the second takes it in and then Buffalo would actually respond back. So now I'm gonna have to do it myself where I'm just gonna take off, get a couple of good blocks here and there's just one more that we needed. But I should have known that Dalen Maurice wasn't gonna get that for us and we aren't gonna be able to do much here. I'm 13 for 13 so I really don't wanna force anything deep on any of the streaks yet and I might have to keep playing until I throw an incompletion because this stat line right now looks insane. Approaching halftime I am 15 for 15 and that corner route got open. So here in the third quarter it's probably best if I continue to stay out there on the field until I make a mistake. I just know that one of my teammates are probably gonna ruin it for me by dropping the ball. Hopefully Dalen Maurice is able to bring this one in and he does. So that's actually gonna give him a new school record and the fact that it was Calvin Gibbs originally should tell you how many halfback screens we've thrown. I mean our halfback has touched the ball more than most of our receivers and this is a perfect example of why because on a third and goal we just had to give it to him instead of going for a deep pass. From there we'd kick a field goal and I'd never get to see the field again so I'm pretty sure I had my first perfect stat line ever and going 20 for 20 for five touchdowns is crazy. I'm still gonna need to get 300 coach trust to become a household name though so before the conference championship I just want to hop into one more practice to see if I'm able to get any against our defense. With about six reps left, I am up to 800, but I don't think I'm going to reach enough through this. But because of all the XP I've been able to earn, I'm definitely glad that I actually practiced this week, and I'm very warmed up for our conference championship game against Toledo. I think it's time to get into it, and all we're going to need before the playoffs is about 150 coach trust. But in order to make it, we know that we cannot lose, and I thought Toledo might be ranked higher, but it turns out they lost a game. So because Western Michigan beat them, it's not going to help our resume the way I thought it would. With our XP, I was able to get a couple more upgrades to increase my agility, and it's time for my final MAC matchup ever. I'm playing in the conference championship game for the second season in a row, and this is the only thing that stands between Northern Kentucky and the playoffs. That was a stupid read to make, but Dalen Maurice caught it. So maybe whenever we need him to clutch up for us, he's somebody we can actually rely on, and Calvin Gibbs has a lot of green grass that's in front of him here. So we have already scored a touchdown. Our defense would also get a stop, and things are looking very bright for Northern Kentucky early on in this game. This is exactly how we have to play, though, and I think it's cover two, which means Jay Stun the second is going to be open. And that play would have been perfect if he could have just stayed on his feet. But now I've taken a sack and we're out of field goal range until Calvin Gibbs gets five. It's all on him whether or not we pick up this third and ten. It looks like he doesn't have enough blockers. So senior kicker Jordan Rogers is going to have to drill it. And with our defense getting another stop, I'm already feeling very good about this one. Once again, Calvin Gibbs gets this school record. So I'm sure that Dalen Maurice is going to want to get it back from him and he makes the catch. Now on first and ten, we are definitely going to have this seam over to him. So he does have the record now. And they're probably going to continue you swapping it back and forth. On the final play of the first quarter, I'm just going to dump it off to our halfback to get the first down, but he breaks that tackle and fights for more. So we are playing extremely well right now. And I just realized that it's been over five quarters since I've thrown an incompletion in this road to glory, which is just a crazy stat. I'm going to try to go this entire game without making a mistake either. We'll see if I can pull it off. And I'm going to get Calvin Gibbs in space. We're on the halfback toss. He reaches the end zone. Even though we're up 17 to zero, I haven't gotten credit for a single touchdown in this matchup because of Gibbs. So honestly, that's not good for somebody that's in the running for the Heisman and my coach wants me to continue feeding it to him so that's all I can do. We wouldn't get a first down there but our defense got to stop so quickly and unfortunately because I'm only 5'9 they are going to bat down that pass so now I'll just send it deep and Dalen Maurice brings it in. I might have thrown an incompletion but my stats still look fantastic and there's my first touchdown. So one of the biggest games of the season that I was potentially worried about is already over and with 40 seconds left in the half I'm going to find Jace on the second. I guess we'll see if I can pass for another touchdown here. I do not want to turn the ball over. I can't be that risky. And if I keep playing this way, the backup should be in very shortly. Calvin Gibbs is going to reach the end zone. And even though they would score a touchdown to start the third quarter, it's not going to matter. With the way that we're playing right now, I would say we're prepared for playoff matchups against better schools, but we'll see. And here on second and three, I'm just going to find Evan Carter Jr. We'd end up winning by a lot, and I've now run the MAC conference for two seasons, so it's nice to see myself get another trophy. But the main one I'm worried about is the Heisman. I've also become a household name. And just like last season, it was a landslide with the voting. I might have thrown a few more interceptions but my completion percentage was at 81% and the rushing yards and touchdowns went down so that shows I stood in the pocket more. As for receivers, I did hate on him a lot but I got Dalen Maurice the bullet in the cough with this insane stat line and I forgot to check the drops last season but it looks like he only had six so I guess I over exaggerated. In 2013 he had 15 of them and it was wide receiver Malachi Harris that had the most last season with 13. Now going into the playoffs it looks like we're going to be the 11 seed and just in case I could get injured I am going to boost up my injury so now I feel like I'm prepared.
prepared for what could be the biggest moments of my career. Luckily, we're actually a higher overall than Penn State, and we'll need that since we're playing on the road. This is the first playoff game of my career, and Penn State's 10-2, and so I have no idea how this is going to go, but we've handed it off twice. And because I can change the play 20 times now, I'm definitely going to do that on third down. Here we go. I don't want to be held to a three and out, and Dalen Maurice got open. So that is exactly what we needed there. It looks like they're going with man-to-man -man coverage, and again, he's going to reel in the catch. We've already been able to get past midfield, and the wide receiver screen is boxed. So now I'm just going to look for our slant or our halfback wheel, and Calvin Gibbs catches it. That sets us up for a third and four, which shouldn't be too difficult to pick up if they don't have anybody out in the quarterback contain. And after getting obliterated by Notre Dame earlier in this season, I'm going to have to lock in if we're going to come out on top. But Evan Carter Jr. has already reached the end zone once, and our defense stopped the Nittany Lions, so we have it back up by seven. If we could just score on every possession from here on out, they have almost no chance of coming back. But I threw that one straight to them, so I need to be a lot more careful. This is another huge third and long, and I'm just going to wait for our route to get open over the middle. But I didn't have enough time to get it out, and once again, our defense has forced a stop against the Nittany Lions. After Notre Dame put up like 40, I didn't know how we'd do against better schools. But so far, we seem to be doing okay in our first playoff matchup, and I'm going to take Calvin Gibbs in the flat. We have six first downs to their one, so we're definitely playing like the better team. But I've made a couple of questionable reads because their coverage is tighter. And on the final play of the first quarter, Calvin Gibbs catches the halfback screen where he gets to about the 38. I don't know if we're going to go for it or attempt a long field goal, but it looks like we're going to trust our kicker, and he can definitely hit from here. Then Penn State would score a touchdown, so it's 10 to 7, and their coverage is clamping. So we better step up quickly, and I think I'm just going to take our running back for five or six, but he breaks the tackle to get the first. You all saw it on the season stats. Calvin Gibbs has been one of our best wide receivers, and we got the four verticals play call. If our offensive line holds up, this could have been good, but I didn't see anything I liked. On third and inches, the ball goes into the hands of Calvin Gibbs, and after failing to pick it up, I'm just relieved to see we still have a lead when we get the ball back. We're definitely not doing as better offensively as we have all season, but I've seen a lot from our defense. I got hit into that throw, and it actually wasn't in intended for Dalen Maurice, but he made a fantastic adjustment there, and whenever they run man-to-man -man coverage, I feel like all I can do is just scramble. It looks like this time they're going with zone, so I'm going to try to dot it up, and I did, but we dropped it. So we're going to run back a similar play call. It's man-to-man -man coverage, and I have to dump it off to our halfback. My coach keeps on giving me four verticals, and I think we'll have a receiver here if I can avoid taking the sack, but they might play that with the safety, and Flowers got over to the football. That is so unfortunate. Somebody needs to make the tackle on him, and we do, but I should have been more careful, and I cannot believe that Penn State still only has seven points against us, but I'm about to take the sack. So I'm crumbling in the playoffs against better competition. And this is such a long third 19 to try and pick up, but there's a route I could take and we are going to make the play to Malachi Harris. He's going to use his speed to try and evade everybody and he might have been gone. That shoelace tackle would catch him, but it's okay. We're still down to the 25. And on second and eight, man-to-man -man coverage will not stick on that route. Evan Carter Jr. is going to get his second touchdown. I've also broken my own school record. And the fact that the Nittany Lions still have seven points against us is honestly incredible, but we fumble it away. And I'm single-handedly trying to lose this for my team. Evidently, I should have upgraded my carrying more because now we find ourselves only up by three. And on second and six, Calvin Gibbs gets this one where he is going to be able to get us closer. It's not a first down, but it shouldn't be too hard to convert here as long as we held on. And I can guarantee that if I could turn on Chew Clock and Road to Glory, I would definitely do it here. I'm trying to get the biggest result of my career and I have to continue to make the right read like that one. But the pressure is starting to build up a lot and I'm really hoping for cover two on this play, but it was man-to-man -man, so we're going to take Maurice. With a new set of downs, they are again going to go with man-to-man -man coverage and it looks like Jace done the second got open. So we're not too far away from scoring the touchdown and I know that that contain could have played it. So I didn't take the flat when I wanted to and our slant eventually did get open. Jay Stun the second puts us back up by 10 points. And this is the biggest fourth and three ever where Rodgers is going to be a bit short. All I could do was watch as our defense came up so clutch for us in that situation. And all we have to do is make sure that we don't take a safety. Why is Gibbs running backwards? And now once again, we have to trust our defense because it's back to being an eight point game and that's dropped. It is fourth and 10 and all they did was just hand it off. So if we can just get one first down, we will get the win versus the Nittany Lions. And I still cannot believe that we took that safety, but it should be okay. With Calvin Gibbs picking it up, we can pretty much run out the rest of the clock in this one, and he keeps on fighting. So we're gonna come out on top of this one, and I might even rub it in by trying to get the touchdown. We are going on to the semifinals with NKU, and I deserve to win player of the game, but if I want to win a championship, there's still a ton of work to do. And next up is Texas A&M, who's a 99 overall. It is the quarterfinals of the college football playoffs, and we have a huge game on the line, but I just made the worst possible read to open this one up versus the Aggies. And on third and 13, we could be in some trouble. They were pressing Pressing Jay Stun the second though, and he catches it. Anytime that they give us a cover two look, I'm gonna do my best to shred it, and Calvin Gibbs gets a few. But it would have been nice if he could have gotten some more yardage there. I'm staring down the deep 
post and that's going to cause me to almost take the sack, but I get it out to Daylon Maurice and I cannot believe that we've already made it down inside the red zone, but things seem to be going well and Evan Carter Jr. is wide open. From here, I wish I could just hand it off, but they wanted me to go with the play action instead and fullback Marcus Watts actually got involved for one of the first times. Texas A&M wouldn't score either, so our defense has been impressive so far and I have to try to bomb them, but that was the wrong move. That was a play that worked versus Mac conference opponents and so was this one, but they stop it. So it's third and 10. They want us to run a halfback draw and the options aren't great. That's why it's so important that I can hot route at this point in the series. And on third and 10, I'm going to have our tight end as long as he's able to catch it, but he dropped it. So they got the ball back again, but they weren't able to score. So our defense must be putting in some incredible work. After what Notre Dame did to us in the regular season, I wasn't sure if we'd be able to compete against some of these harder schools. And these matchups have certainly been harder as they're going to box us up on third down. But our defense has gotten their third stop of the day and we have it on offense again. On second and inches, we have Jace done the second in motion and that's going to leave him wide open up the middle of the field. And then I'm rooting for a cover two look where we are going to have him wide open. Actually, that's Malachi Harrison. He's gone. I honestly thought we just got lucky against Penn State, but we have gotten another stop. So it's 14 to zero. And if our defense can keep this up, I don't think we're going to have any issues making a championship. Here on first and 10, it looks like we're going to have our running back wide open in the flat. I was just waiting for the route bounce. He's going to stiff arm that guy and it's our backup. David Marks has not been good throughout this entire series, but that was a great play. And right now we are beating Texas A&M like we would have beaten a school that we played during MAC conference play. Not a single player on our defense is over a 90 overall, but it doesn't seem to matter. And my guess is whatever coordinators NKU has hired just have to be insane. I'm still carrying the offense as well as we're about to get our fourth touchdown. So right now it seems like we're going to cruise into the semifinals. And after our defense has gotten us an interception, I would say the Aggies are cooked. We could end the half with another touchdown, which would just be insane. And I didn't take it. I should have, but I was running. I didn't want to risk throwing an interception and they're going to play that perfectly. Now I got to get over to Wilson to make the tackle. And I'm not sure why I even tested him there. I got to say, I laid the hammer. And even if I'm turning it over, I don't care because I've already won the Heisman trophy at this point in my career. And we're just going to go for the deep shot. That was a great play. I've thrown for 400 yards here in the third quarter on Heisman versus Texas A&M. And why couldn't the Penn State game have gone like this? It's been so simple. With that pass, I'm probably going to set another record and I have. So that's nuts to do that in a playoff matchup versus Texas A&M. But after that, we just put in our backups to finish it out. And our fans have got to be thrilled. We're going on to the semifinals. We're either playing against Ohio State or USF. And unfortunately, the Bulls couldn't keep up with the Buckeyes. So we have to play against a school that hasn't lost a game. And it's going to be in State Farm Stadium. If I can win this game for my team, Northern Kentucky is going to make the national championship. But Dalen Maurice is back to dropping the football. And I've played Ohio State one time in my career as a junior where they took us down, but they also had home field advantage. I think we've gotten much better since then. So it'll be interesting to see how we stack up against them. And I'm going to let Calvin Gibbs go to work by handing it off to him, but he doesn't get much. If he was a better runner, it would make things so much easier for us. I'm not sure if we're going to get this Devin Carter Jr. though. And we're being very aggressive going forward on fourth and inches, but Calvin Gibbs was open and that was the right move. I hurried that one up and my coach was not happy about it, but I don't care. I knew we could get it. And on second and five, I'm going to have this drag route to get us another first. Now we're starting to get into a little bit of a flow and I always trust that deep post route. He's wide open. So we started things off the right way, but they would get a touchdown as well. Luckily, they missed the extra point and after avoiding the sack, I see Malachi Harris is wide open with the deep post route and he is unfortunately going to get caught. I thought he was gone, but at least we're down to the five yard line where I'm going to just take it in. And that is exactly what we needed to respond back to Ohio State. If we have the ball back as well, our defense has clearly done their job. I'm going to try to get it to Dalen Maurice and I made it. So even though it's risky to take that route, sometimes it works. And I kind of trust that Jay Stun the second is going to break the press there, but he didn't. And I just hit the wrong button. I've been trying to keep an eye on our best wide receiver just to see when he gets open like he does with this one inside the red zone. And I can't lie, this is the best football that I have ever played in my career. Now that we've made it all the way to the semifinals, we cannot afford to lose to the Buckeyes. Calvin Gibbs is not going to get in, but we're so close to doing so, and that's going to happen here. Our defense would also hold them again, so as long as I don't mess up, we should be fine. But that play simply took too long to develop. It was a bad decision to go with that there. And my three options for third and long are terrible. If I somehow managed to pick this up, I would be shocked, but there is a defender to get around, and I can't do it. So the Buckeyes would get the ball back and score a touchdown, which makes it an eight point game before the half. I've also just been told that Calvin Gibbs is out for the rest of the game with a hip injury. So we're not going to have our star running back. And that means we just need to continue to pass the ball where I'm going to take it to the backup and he isn't going to get much. The pressure is definitely on right now. And Evan Carter Jr. is my read, but they had somebody right there. I don't know why I thought he was going to bite down on something else. I've thrown a pick in every playoff game and I've got to stop making dumb mistakes. With a touchdown, you'd think that Ohio State would tie it up, but they didn't get the two point conversion. So that definitely helps us. We get the first and I just broke my first 
NCAA record. That tells you how insane of a season I've been having, almost 6,000 passing yards. And here on second and 10, I am going to instantly roll out. I was hoping to hit something deep, and that's probably been my issue. Going into the championship, I need to be reminded to take my flats. So I'm going to be looking at the underneath routes on this play, and that's when I'm going to find our tight end. All we have to do is get a touchdown, and we'd have a two possession lead. That's going to be a first. And it looks like Jace done the second, kind of got around that cornerback, but I was terrified of actually throwing it. I do not want to make a mistake this far down the field, so I'm just going to do the smart thing in this situation. And I'm not sure how I feel about our backup halfback getting this one with a toss, because that hasn't worked for us so far, and I think I'm just going to try to make it to the end zone myself, which I do. Even though Ohio State would score a touchdown, we're still up by two. And the pressure is starting to build because we cannot make any more mistakes in this game. If we don't pick up this third and eight, they're going to get the ball back, and that is caught by Jay Stunn. And now on first and 10, the halfback screen to our backup running back gets us like nothing. This could be a little bit risky, but I kind of want to go deep to Dalen Maurice, and I didn't do it. But because I didn't look anywhere else, it is third and 19, and our deep post route's going to be knocked down. With 32 seconds left, the Buckeyes would score a touchdown. So that means the pressure is on, and I am going to complete this one to our tight end. Because we still have all three of our timeouts left, I am hoping for the best, and that's going to be caught by him again. But my coach just automatically called our first one for us, and I see there's a lot of green grass on this left side of the field, so I'm going to take it. Words cannot express how nervous I am. I just want to get into the end zone, and I'm going to try to do it with my legs. So with 13 seconds left, I've tied it all up, but we have to hit this extra point, and we do. As long as our defense just takes care of business with this last play, we should be fine, and that throw is not going to be enough. So somehow the Norse are headed to a national championship game, and I cannot believe we've made it this far. I could actually complete all the goals in this series, and in the biggest game, we have to play the Irish again. They beat us so bad earlier in the year, but hopefully we can get our revenge. The national championship is against the one team that beat me this season, so I'm a little bit nervous, but I could actually win it all with NKU, and here on third and 10, we almost threw a pick. Fortunately, because of the rain, they'd fumble it away, but that was not a solid first drive from us, and Calvin Gibbs just stiff-armed that defender. He is clearly not messing around in this one. I'm going to pitch it to him and see what he can do here, and I don't see this going well for us, but my coach wanted me to run it anyway. He broke one tackle, so now it is third and five. They've run man-to-man -man coverage, and I'm just going to throw it to our running back, who's going to be Mark Short. I can't complain about the fact that we're taking a field goal here, especially since our defense forced a three and out, and this is going much different than the first time we played against them this season. As much as I don't like playing in the rain, I have a feeling it could actually help us out a bit as Evan Carter Jr. won't go down. And with a new set of downs, my coach wants me to pass it again. I'm going to check it down and we should not have gotten the first. I honestly cannot believe that worked out for Calvin Gibbs, but I love throwing that route and they played it. So that's the second time it hasn't worked against a better program and Dunn dropped the ball. It is third and 10 now. That is man-to-man -man coverage. I'm going to trust Harris. And slowly but surely, we are working to score the first touchdown in this one. I'm honestly just really happy with how our defense has done so far, but they could have gotten a stop there. So I had to use my legs to get the first. And every single time my coach has called this this season, I have not liked it. But I can only change the play 20 times a game. And every so often, some of those options are not very good. On second and 13, I just have to hope that somehow this wide receiver screen actually works out and it does. So now it's third and short. We honestly don't need that much. And it looks like they're about to get the sack because I wasn't very decisive, but I actually scrambled for a lot. It's a good thing that the Irish defensive line doesn't seem to be that quick. Calvin Gibbs is going to reach the end zone and our defense could get them off the field on this third and 10 where the blitz paid off. The fact that their quarterback, Kenny Minchie, is one for seven tells you how well that we've been playing and I needed to get a block, but I didn't and I'm still able to get a lot. I have waited all season to use my legs like this and I'm just going to pray that Dalen Maurice comes free here, which he does to like the 35. We are dominating versus Notre Dame and I see that Jace done the seconds open. I'm going to try to get it to him and it worked. They would score a touchdown, but we're still up by 10 points in the national championship game and it is crucial that we end this first half in the right way. I see it open. Jace done the second, but for whatever reason, reason he loves to fall over when catching it and he would have been gone on this next one. I'm just going to go for it. I didn't think that defender played him well, but evidently we cannot outrun these guys and I think we're going to have our tight end. Evan Carter Jr. is going to get to the two. And why are we calling a timeout? Now if we reach the end zone, Notre Dame's going to have a chance to get points as well, but at least we're up by 17 for now. And I can't believe they're kicking a field goal here. They'd also kick another to open up the third quarter. So we are sitting pretty versus the Irish right now. And all we have to do is make sure that this drive goes well as we just got to get a touchdown. If we can do that, I'd feel very good about our chances. Evan Carter Jr. just ran a filthy route to get to the red zone, and we just need him to do the same thing here, but the crossing route did not, so I'm just going to take off with my legs instead. Here on second and one, it looks like it was man-to-man -man coverage, but I got scared of taking something, so again, I'm going to use my legs, and we're so close to putting away the Irish, which we don't do here. If they didn't commit blatant pass interference, we would have gotten in, but it's not going to matter because I'm going to do it on the ground instead, and going into the fourth quarter, we're up by 18. Now, they would score another touchdown, but they wouldn't get the two-point conversion, 
game which helps us. And if we can just hold on for a little bit longer, we're going to win it all with the Norse. It is third and 11 though, and that looks like man-to-man -man coverage, so I'm going to take it to Dalen Maurice. And I don't even know why we're still passing the ball. That's what my coach wants to do, so instead I'm going to use my legs to make sure we run it instead. From here, the only chance that Notre Dame still has in this one is if we turn it over or if we get a field goal against them, but I don't plan on making any mistakes, and this is going to take us to the eight. Now we're just going to pass it, and that's a wide open J stun the second. So from here, I can confidently say we should win, and all we have to do is convert on this third and 11 after they'd score a touchdown, and that's what happens. We have taken down the Irish in the championship, and this was the craziest series that I've ever done. We'd get revenge, I won two Heisman trophies, and then there's our team holding up the national championship one. By the end of my career, my Road to Glory legend score was almost 15,000, and there's a ton of different awards that I was able to achieve, especially be named player of the game, but there's also a lot of stuff that I couldn't accomplish. At the end of the day, I developed from a 45 overall to this, and I had an incredible senior year with stats like these. I won all these awards twice. That's just crazy. And rushing-wise, I finished with 19 touchdowns like my junior year. As much as I hated on him, it wouldn't have been possible without Dalen Maurice. And this could be where my career ends, but I'm also considering taking myself to Madden. So let me know down in the comments what you all want to see, and thank you all for so much support throughout this entire series.